Previously on The Bill. Abby wouldn't run away. Look, if this was any other kid, I would be right in the heart of this investigation. Oh, you're all right. It's always good food I've been having. Cheers, Eddie. Was well, something interesting? That was Eddie Duncan. Now, he was a dealer that I helped Nick when I was in uniform, yeah? Now, he was acquitted, you know, but he still gives me information from time to time. Right, so what's he got? It's five kilos of high-grade cocaine heading for Sun Hill. Now, he reckons that the trafficker Frank Tope's having a meeting with a buyer in the next few days. OK, let's go and meet this Duncan. Oh, no can do, mate. He's in the south of France. Well, that's nice for him. So where's the coke coming in from? Oh, I don't know. Well, has he got a name for the buyer? Nah. It's all right, fountain of knowledge your mate, isn't he? I trust this source, Rob. So why do the words straws and clutching spring to mind, Gary? I thought you'd be well up for this, mate. High-profile drugs job. <laughs> You've got info for some scrote we can't meet. As far as I can see, you're whistling in the wind, mate. Let's see what the DCI says, eh? I heard you were in the child protection team. Yeah, that's right. I just left PPU myself. It can be quite rough, can't it? It's challenging work. It can be quite harrowing sometimes. Oh, you're working on the Abby Nixon case, aren't you? Yeah, not a lot to go on right now. Sam's been amazing, though. I don't know how she's holding up. Mm, must be a living nightmare for her. Can I have everyone's attention, please? DCI Jack Meadows collapsed yesterday with a suspected heart attack. This morning he's been transferred to the cardiac unit at St Hughes. How is he, Gov? It's hard to say at the minute. He, he's going to be all right, isn't he? They're going to keep him under observation. Any more news, I'll let you know. Oh, and in the meantime, anything that you'd usually take to the DCI, you now bring to me. OK? Oh, Gov. There's been a stabbing in Loftus Street. No ID on the victim yet, but he's in St. Hughes. Uniform are doing house to house, and they're still waiting for the senior examiner to get there. Can I run with it? Debbie. DS McAllister. Gov, I'm... If it's not too much trouble, I want you to work with Susie on this. Show her the ropes. I wanted to go and see the DCI as soon as possible. If DS McAllister wants to do that, I could work with somebody else. You don't need to work with somebody else. I'm just concerned about the health of my DCI. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but your work takes priority, Debbie. Maybe if you've got some time later on, you can run a mercy mission. Victim was found stabbed at 9.30 this morning in a doorway. No wallet on him, so maybe a robbery gone wrong. The flat is rented by Monica Porter, a known Tom. You've certainly hit the ground running. Never been one to sit at the back of the class, even when I'm the new girl. Anyone see anything? Uniform brought Tom in to give us a statement. We should interview her first. I'll see you in custody in five minutes, Susie. Then I'll decide how best to kick off this investigation. I, uh, have you heard about the DCI? Yeah, everyone's in a state of shock. Let's hope that's not the last we see of him. No, I didn't mean it like that. You know, it's hard to bounce back after a heart attack. He will. You'll see. Well, as long as he doesn't think of taking early retirement, because there's a certain DI would be very happy to step into his shoes. Oh, great. Manson in charge. <laughs> That'll make my life a whole lot easier. Gov, I don't see why we should trust what Eddie Duncan has given us. He's got no track record in supplying us with reliable information. I understand your caution, Rob, but we have to act on this type of intelligence. <sighs> why are we using our resources on dubious info when we should be stepping up our operation against a scumbag family like the Radfords? We know there's money running through their club that's unaccounted for. We should be trying to trace it. Change the record, Rob. That investigation is continuing, but we have nothing more on them at the moment. Now, I want you to work on this information with Gary and give it your full attention. Do I make myself clear? Crystal. Gov. So what did he do when you found this man stabbed on your doorstep? Called the police. But you didn't hear anything before that? No arguments or shouting? Oh, I thought I was asleep. Come on. Is he your pimp? No! Look, I swear I've never seen the guy before today. 
Yeah. I took this. I feel a bit bad about it now. Well, it's not a robbery then. Daniel Kingsman. He's a teacher at Radkin Road School. So, by a sleep, did you mean you were with a client? Lots of CCTV around there, so we'll know if you're lying. All right. Yeah. What's your client's name? Jimmy Peake. What time did this Jimmy Peake leave you in the morning? I don't know. Maybe quarter past nine. Maybe later. Not long before you found Daniel Kingsman on your doorstep, then. Any ideas where we could find this, Mr. Peake? I think he works at St. Hughes's somewhere. Looks like we can kill two birds with one stone, then. That's a flash motor, Sarge. They're up to no good. What do you reckon? I think you're right. It's worth checking out. Sierra Oscar from 5-4. Go ahead, 5-4. Uh, request a vehicle check. Dark green Lexus, vehicle registration number 123, Charlie Alpha Sierra. Over. Stand by, 5-4. Vehicle registered to a Wells B. Ash Building Company, Sister Lane, Cardiff. Received. Out. Look, I can see you're upset about the DCI. Why don't you go and see him now? I'll go find out who this Jimmy Peake is and check with the uniform and CSE to see what they've come up with. Then we'll go and talk to the victim's wife in, let's say, half an hour. Great. See you later. Uniform haven't noticed any increased activity in using or dealing. Oh, there's a surprise. Hang on, let's not jump the gun. If someone is bringing that amount of cocaine to Sunhill, they're going to want to keep it quiet, aren't they, in case they get ambushed? Any intelligence about where it might be coming in or who's buying it? Well, we've had a couple of leads, but nothing concrete. Steve. Now, it's a bit thin, but we did see a couple of kids jump out of a flashy motor. We checked it out, and it's registered to a building firm in Cardiff. As soon as they saw us, they had it on their toes. OK. Gary, check it out. Go. Have they said anything? Well, I'm still waiting for the results. But it seems certain that it was a heart attack. How's the station? In shock. Everyone's concerned about you. What did Dion Manson tell everyone? He collapsed, but he didn't know much more than that. I bet he's open, it's nothing trivial. He's been after your job ever since he arrived. I suppose people think I'm past it. Don't be silly. Debbie, can you keep me posted, you know, with what's happening? I'd appreciate that. Yeah, of course I will. How's the DCI? Fine. Unlikely to be a robbery, since the attackers didn't take his wallet. So maybe two clients got territorial over a Tom and they ended up fighting over her. I don't know how things were done at CPT, but here at Sun Hill we deal in fact rather than making assumptions. In my experience, speculating can sometimes save a lot of time. I found Jimmy Peake, or should I say James Peake. He's a consultant paediatric surgeon. His office is upstairs. Right. That's good. Mrs. Kingsman. Yes. D.S. McAllister, D.C. Sim, Sun Hill. How's your husband? He's still unconscious. They think they might have to operate to um, stop the internal bleeding. Do you know what happened, Jack? Not yet. We're trying to work out what he was doing at Loftus Street, 9.30 this morning. Loftus Street? No. Daniel's a teacher, isn't he? Yeah. This isn't making any sense. I thought he must have been attacked on the way to work. It's a bit of a delicate situation, Mrs Kingsman. Your husband was found stabbed on the doorstep of a known prostitute. What? No. No. There must be some sort of mistake about all of this. My husband would never do anything like that. Now, I have a hot tip from a mate of mine, if you're interested. <laughs> not really, no. No? All right, your loss. Oh, no, you're not downloading porn again, are you, Sam? This rubbish keeps clogging up my computer. Go on, then. 
What's this tip then? It's Keith the Teeth, race at 4.30. Yeah, I'm tempted myself. Only some mugs game really, innit? Yeah. I'm so sick of the way my mum's ignored me all my life. She's meant to be my mother, but she's never been there for me. Her stupid job's always been more important than me. I don't know if I can go on. I feel so unwanted and alone. She's never cared. I'm not even afraid of dying anymore. I've even started praying, and I haven't done that since I was a kid. But I don't think God will give us more than we could cope with. And I've got more than I could ever cope with. So this might be the last time anyone hears from me. And some people will be relieved about that. Like my mum. After the last suicide note, I th I thought she was... What does this mean now? Does this mean she's alive? It could be that she's playing a sick game here, Sam, couldn't it? No. She's been angry with me. But she wouldn't do this. Why would she send two suicide notes? This is someone else's sick game, Phil. Not my daughter's. But it looks like the webcam site that she used before, Sam. That was your home, wasn't it? Well, she could have got back into the house, couldn't she? There could be evidence there. And these might not even be suicide notes. They could be ransoms. Well, I'm not asked for anything. Sam, I'm going to find out where this reflex internet's registered. Still don't believe me, do you? If... She is still alive. She's with someone. And she's not there of her own choice. I can see that in her eyes. We've got to look at all the possibilities, Sam, OK? Let's get this video cleaned up, and then we'll look at things from there. Look at her, Phil. <sighs> Abby's a shouter. When we row, she goes mental. <sniffs> she's too controlled, I'm telling you. This is not my Abby. Where were you at 9.30 this morning? 9.30? Let me see. No, no early appointments. I would have been right here in my office. Can anyone verify that? Well, I was doing paperwork, so probably not. Well, I'm sure we can verify that on the hospital CCTV. We have a statement from a witness who claims that you were with her at the time. A witness? May I ask who? Monica Porter. I see. That's, that's ridiculous. Why would you say that? We were hoping that you could tell us. Mr. Peak, a man has been stabbed outside Monica Porter's flat this morning. And it was around the time that she says that you were with her. We'd like to know if you heard or saw anything. Well, how could I? I just told you I wasn't there. Mr. Peake, if you refuse to cooperate with us now and we later find out that you were there, it's going to be much harder for us to be discreet. All right, listen, I was there, but I didn't have anything to do with anyone being stabbed. What time did you leave Monica Porter's flat? <sighs> At about 9.15. Where did you go? I made my way back to my car, which was parked on uh, Loftus Street. Did you see anyone? Yes, there was a man walking towards Monica's flat. Was there anybody else in that area? Actually, yes. There were some school kids. They were quite rough. When I got back to my car, my boot had been scratched. I checked Reflex Internet and the ISP. Sam. Sorry, Phil. I checked the ISP. And the message didn't come from your house. Shh. Did you hear that? What? That. 
I can't hear anything. There's a man's voice in the background. Okay, right. There. Well, that could be a TV, a radio. No! There's someone there! Why can't you hear it? We should see if these kids are from Daniel Kingsman's school. To get on to Rod Kim Road School, had he been in any arguments with pupils recently? If someone had seen him out of school, maybe something could have got out of hand. Do you think that's likely? <laughs> um, uh, maybe I didn't make myself clear this morning. I'm your DS. So get on to Rubkin Road School and tell me what they say. I'll see you back at the station. Jim, how do you feel about doing a collection for the DCI? I'll do uniform, you do CID. Good idea. Here we go. I'm a bit skint at the moment, so I'll do it later. Mm, yeah, a likely story. Just make sure these tight so-and-sos cough up, all right? Phil, I'm doing a collection for the DCI. Right. It was a bit of a shock, wasn't it? I thought he was strong as an ox. Come on, he is nothing on a bit. You're choking, he's got years left. Mind you, I'll have to get used to you-know-who being in charge. Oh, no, what's Cracker doing here? I called him, actually. Look, you're forgetting he's the only other person that knows that Abby wouldn't do this out of choice. I came as soon as I got your message. What can I do to help? Gov, we need a word. I think I've got something that proves that Abby was abducted. Yeah, there's definitely something. It could be a TV, radio, someone in the street, anything. Yeah, that's what I thought. But the intonation and timing does sound as though someone's asking Abby a question. It's the person holding Abby against her will. You leave this to Phil, Sam. You can't work on this case, you know that. This is my daughter! I've got to do something! Gov, look, I know I was sceptical before, but it does sound as though Abby's with someone. Now, whether that's by choice or not remains to be seen. Exactly. Look, I'm open to this. But there's still no evidence of a kidnap. No demand for a ransom, and this voice could be anything. So, Gov, can I at least have permission to follow this up as an official line of inquiry? You keep me posted. Did forensics find anything on Kingsman's clothing? Nothing yet. We're talking to the school kids. Maybe they saw something. A couple of scumbags off the street. I can understand a row escalating into a stabbing. Not a surgeon and a teacher. No, that's what I thought. Hmm. Did they know each other? Not sure yet. I'll do a PNC with a TE check on them both. See what that throws up. You want to find out as much as you can about the victim and your suspect. We'll see if their paths have crossed. DC Sim, making any headway on the Loftus Street stabbing? Well, Diaz McAllister thinks it might be the kids at Daniel Kingsman's school. Maybe a telling off gone wrong? I've been told to speak to the headmaster. You disagree? Well, not at all. I think she's being very uh, thorough. What makes me think that you've got your own particular angle on this? Not my own angle, exactly. But I would like to talk to James Peake again. As a witness, he wasn't very forthcoming the first time round. Well, if anybody can get him to talk, you can. You flatter me, Gov. Where is Diaz McAllister? I left her at the hospital. She's gone to see the DCI. How's he doing? Don't know. Thought I'd be tactful and leave her to it. Anything on that Lexus? Yeah, I ran a PNC check on it. Not even a speeding fine. Looks like a dead end to me. So what you got? I checked out that Wellsby Ash Building Company with Company's House. It's owned by a John Kasman. License plate 123CAS. Let's have a look, shall we? So what's the final score? Uh, 70 and Smithy's given me 60 from the relief. Yeah, you should get the governor something nice for that. Yeah. Interesting. Kasman got three years for attempting to supply Class A drugs in 1998. Suspected of supplying Class A drugs since. Could be our man. Sarge, I spoke to the headmaster at Daniel Kingsman School. He hasn't taught there for the last seven months. Any idea where he's teaching now? Nowhere. He left and hasn't worked since. The headmaster seems to think he's had some kind of breakdown. So Sarah Kingsman was lying to us. Mm. Unless he'd been keeping it from her. Oh. I did a PNC and a T check on James Peake. And he got stopped twice in Nottingham. So I got them to check their intel system. And? He was stopped for curb crawling. In, in Nottingham. Which is where the Kingsmans were living till last year. Did he live there too? Yeah. Small world, eh?
We have intelligence that five kilos of high-grade cocaine will be arriving in Sunhill over the next few days. Do we know where it's going, Gov? Well, intelligence from Cardiff Police tells us that this man, John Casman, could be buying. They've had various of his addresses under surveillance over the last six months due to increased drug activity. Is DC Best intelligence good, sir? I'm satisfied it's worth taking seriously, yes. Now, we've spoken to Ensis, and they've been tracking this guy, this supplier, Frank Tope, over the last few years, but they've never been able to pin anything on him. Now, if this shipment is coming in Sunhill, somebody somewhere knows something, so I want you to speak to all your sources. Locals who may have major drug connections, distributors, suppliers, dealers, anyone you think that you can push to talk to us. Sir, if Casman's manor is Cardiff, what is he doing in Sunhill? We have no idea. I want you to check vehicles, check phone calls, who's talking to who. Casman won't be able to shift this on his own, so who's helping him? Rob and Gary, I want you to follow him, see where he's going, who he's talking to. Um... <clears throat> Aren't we uh, forgetting something, sir? What? Well, who else do we know in Sun Hill is trying to take over the drugs market? Well, I'm guessing, Rob, that you're going to say the Radfords. There is nothing to link John Casman with the Radfords. In fact, there's probably been competition. So why don't we just concentrate on the job in hand, eh? Look, uh, I think we got off on the wrong foot this morning. Don't worry about it. Can't be easy for you having a young female CID officer. Look, Mrs. Kingsman, we've just spoken to the headmaster of Rock Kim Road School. I'm sorry, I should have told you. Dan's been so embarrassed about what happened, and I, I didn't think it was relevant. Did your husband have a nervous breakdown? Yeah. Some days he could hardly get out of bed. And being around the children just made it all the worse for him. Why do you say that? Because of what happened to us in Nottingham. What did happen to you in Nottingham? Our baby was killed. Do you know a James Peak? Yes. He's the man that murdered my son. <laughs> Harry died two days after a routine procedure to correct a fault in his hip. He was only 18 months old. James Peake was the surgeon. And you think he was negligent? I know he was. When Harry started to deteriorate, we tried to get hold of Peake for nearly four hours. When he eventually arrived, it was too late. There was an investigation. And we found out that Peake was with a prostitute. When Harry was dying, the hospital covered everything up. There was a, a civil action. But somehow he got off. Doctors, lawyers and judges. Just one big old boys club, isn't it? That must have left you and Dan feeling very bitter. Yes, of course. It nearly destroyed us. I thought we'd come to London for a fresh start. We just came to follow that man, didn't we? It looks that way. <laughs> you failed to mention to us that you knew Daniel Kingsman. Right. I see. I don't think you do see, Mr. Peake. Attempting to pervert the course of justice is a serious offence and you could go to prison. You need to come down the station with us and tell us exactly what happened. Whoever sent you that video is sending you a message. It's in there somewhere. It must be. Yeah, but is the message that Abby's alive? She said this is the last we will hear from her. What does that mean? Well, it's all about power. Trying to keep you guessing without revealing anything tangible. I'd say what we're looking for here is someone who feels emasculated and infantilized on a daily basis. This Freud nonsense is getting us nowhere. Sam, 
if this is a message, we need to think again about who would want you to see this. Think of anybody that's threatened you that has a history of sexual assault, abduction. Okay. I'll go through all my completed jobs on Chris. Review them again. I thought you were here to help her. Yeah, will you carry on? You just stay out of my way so I can get on with the detective work, eh? Ready to take some snaps? Look, I've got to go somewhere first, yeah? Well, where? Look, look start with that, me. I'll catch up with you, yeah? I can't do that. Rob? I'd been to see Monica, and when I came out, Daniel Kingsman was waiting for me. So when was the last time you saw him before then? Not since he and his wife dragged me through court. Did Daniel Kingsman know Monica Porter? No, I don't think so. So how would he know that you were going to be there? He said he'd been following me for weeks. And what did Mr Kingsman do when you came out of the flat? He came up to me. He said that he knew that I'd been up to my old tricks again, but this time he was going to make sure I was found out. What did he do then? He pulled a knife. He said I'd killed his son and now he was going to kill me. He thought it was ironic that I was going to die outside a prostitute's flat, but at least everyone would find out what a low life I was. Gary, I thought I said I'm going to catch you up, man. Yeah, and I thought D.I. Manson told you not to follow David Radford. <laughs> what makes you think I'm following David Radford? <laughs> because you're sitting opposite Newford's restaurant watching David Radford meet someone for lunch. <sighs> what are you doing here? Could ask you the same thing, mate. Okay. So who's the mystery man with David Radford? John Casman. That's it, mate. Nice, big, cheesy grin. I promise I get the Radfords, and today's the day. Yeah, well, they're not in the bag yet, Rob. They will be. He's not going to get away with it this time. Daniel Kingsman tried to stab me. I grabbed his arm, we wrestled. He stumbled and fell, and he pulled me down on top of him. And you took the knife? No, I didn't try to take it. He must have been stabbed with his own knife. I got up and I saw blood coming from his stomach. Then what did he do? Well, I panicked and ran to my car. Look, the man had come to murder me. This is self-defense. Isn't it? It's for the CPS to decide if you used reasonable force. Otherwise, you might be facing some serious criminal charges. What you got? Been developing our holiday pigs, Gov. Guess who John Casman was having lunch with? It's David Rafford. Rob, this is good work. We need to find out when and where this deal's going down. So I want you to put David Rafford under surveillance, okay? As soon as you can. Yes, Gov. Good work. You guys are doing this ongoing investigation into the Bradford's finances, right? Uh, yes, Gov. We've got their records from Spain and since when they've been back in the UK. Good. Well, it looks like the Bradford's are involved in this drug shipment. So I want you to speak to Ensis, see what's going down, get back to me in about an hour. So, I think you'll take to the ID then? Sure. It was really useful for me to have an insight into how you work, Sergeant. Thanks. See you later. Jim, you free this afternoon, mate? I don't know. Why? Well, I've got an obo, but we should really sort something out for the DCI, so can you take care of it? I'm thinking a couple of bottles of single malt or something. Well, I don't really do off licenses, so. Oh, yeah, right. Um... <sighs> well, look, have a mooch around and see if you can find him something. Yeah, well, I'm a bit busy now. Uh, maybe later. Yeah, all right. Bruce Pemberton. What? Bruce Pemberton. I nicked him for abduction about ten years ago. Right, and where is he now? I don't know. He'll be a registered sex offender. From what Sam's told me, he certainly fits the profile. Right. Released on parole about a year ago. And he's in Sun Hill. If he's got my Abbey, same registered address. I'm going round there. Come on. So, so he's deceased. What? January 2004. 
Sam, why don't you go home for a bit? Hmm? Phil's following his lines of inquiry. You should get some sleep. Sleep? How can I sleep? Some sick pervert has got my daughter. That's what I love about surveillance. You know what I'm saying? It's all go when you get a chance. Shh. Yes, David, when I get my sample. Yeah, there's a car park three miles up the B234. It's got to be today. We've been observing a number of people entering Hadley's over the course of a busy evening. The turnover's far higher than it should be. So what do you think? Money laundering? Looks like it. What about the Spanish side of things? Well, the Spanish police believe the Radfords own at least a half a dozen properties in Fuengarola, but they don't know how they paid for them. Now, I just spoke to them about this shipment, and they can confirm that Frank Totes, Casman's supplier, was a known associate of David Radford when they lived in Spain. Well, it looks like it's all coming together, doesn't it? Oh, great. You got something for the DCI, then? I haven't been out yet, Sarge. I'm uh, still collecting. No problem. Radford and Tope will be meeting in the Copse Lane car park at 1720, where Radford will get a sample of the cocaine and hand over the money. They will then drive to a disused warehouse further up the B234 where the drugs have been stored. Officers will be waiting at the warehouse to arrest them once Radford and Tope are with the drugs. At the same time, we'll be raiding Radford's home and club to seize any appropriate evidence. Where does this John Casman fit in? He's a bit part player in all this. He's probably picking up a kilo to take back to Wales. This is a David Radford operation. Now, we've raided their club before and we've always come out with nothing. This time, we catch him red-handed. This is our chance to bring the Radfords down once and for all. Let's not blow it. Sergeant Smith. Our intention today is to execute these search warrants under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Our three priorities are officer safety, safety of members of the public, and seizing and preserving of evidence. There will be three teams, A, B and C. One at each of the locations. We'll make our way to our rendezvous point at 1710. Suspect vehicle now approaching location one. Here we go. Okay. Confirm that target one is now leaving location one. Going to proceed with caution. Still travelling north up the Starkwater Road. You're about one mile from position two, stay well back. Jim. You all right? Oh, uh, yeah. How much you collect? Well, it's about 200. How did you, uh... Oh, I had another whip round. I got some of the top brass to put in as well. Well, that's fantastic. Well, at least we can get the DCI something half decent now. Huh? Well, not half. Well done, mate. There is this taupe. Relax, mate. He'll be here. Maybe Radford saw us. Warned him off. <clears throat> Confirm that Target 1 and Target 2 are at Location 2. Still waiting for drug deal to go ahead. Okay, here we go, baby. Have eyeball and possible drug deal taking place. Okay, David, say bye bye. Everyone signed up. Thanks. I've got the test results back. And? Well, it's just a mild attack. I've got to take more care of myself. It's nothing serious as long as I take the drugs and eat the right food. <sighs> That's a relief. The station will be pleased when I tell them. Look, I've got a favour to ask you. I'm going to have to convalesce for a bit, but there's a couple of jobs that I want sorting out. You're asking me? Well, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, I'm just surprised you're asking me. What about Manson? Nansen's the last person I want looking into my business. <laughs> Didn't know Gary could ride. I don't think God will give us more than we could cope with. And I've got more than I could ever cope with. 
So this might be the last time anyone hears from me. And some people will be relieved about that. Like my mum. She'll be relieved I'm gone. There's nothing else to say. Right, let's see if they can focus in on that. If we can establish a date, we'll know when this was filmed. That's it, Abby. Tell them about yourself, do you know? I told you, it's a voice. But it's been cut. It's a male voice and he's goading her on. He's winding her up to talk about me. Why would he do that? I don't know, Sam. But someone's in control and it's not Abby. Listen, will you give us a second, please? Good news is it was shot this morning. So Abby was alive this morning? We're going to find her, Sam. This person will slip up and the clues will get bigger. To be honest, I don't know how much more of this I can take. Listen, I'm going to go and check the video, see if there's anything else that we've missed. But what if there isn't? Then what? We're both coppers, Phil. We know how most of these things end up. Am I going to find my Abby? My baby? Dumped in some woodland? She might even be dead already. You know, this, this could have been her goodbye. <laughs> Tell you what, mate, if this comes off tonight, we're going to do some serious celebrating, eh? If you don't believe it, I'm going to get well and truly out of it. What's he doing? I don't know, but the warehouse is two miles further up this road. <laughs> Knew it. Sussed us. You don't know that. Target car has changed direction. Repeat. Target car has changed direction. What's going on? He's going back to the club. All well, unit, it looks like Target's returning to position one. Remain in standby positions. Why is he going back to the club? Well, maybe Radford wants to check the sample again before going to stock. But he's already handed the money over. So close. Go. Go ahead. Look, we can still arrest Radford. Okay, look, if we nick him with a sample that's in his car, we might be able to tie the cocaine and the packaging with the batch that's been stored in the warehouse. Okay, Rob, I agree. Continue to follow. Team C. Team C received. Target returning to location one. Remain in situ and await further instructions. You're going to be all right. I can come by later. No, I'll be fine. Really. I know you can't help imagining what Abby must be going through. You must try and keep positive. Look, I am going to come over to yours tonight and we'll work on the profile of whoever this is that's got Abby. We will find her. We'll leave no stone unturned. We'll get her home safe. Yeah. Thank you. I am here for you. You know that, don't you? Confirm that targets are re-entering location one. Receive, Rob. Stand by all units. Control, Team C, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't give to this baby breath for red anyway. That sounds very personal, but we're here to do a job. Well, no, it's not. It's just a nasty piece of work. Oi! Even so, once we're in there, we do not let our emotions run away with us, all right? Mom. Team C. Go, go, go. 
Please stay where you are. Nobody move. Turn around you up against sit the wall. down, please. Put your hands back. Turn around, around up against the wall. Come on. Put your hands on the table. Oh, you just said it again. Wait, he said turn around. Spread him. Inspector Gold. I wonder what the racket was about. Got some bad news for you, darling. Oh, you haven't come about the parking tickets, have you? Oh, it's a bit more serious than that. Where's your David? Well, I think he's just got back. Why? Well, you better get ready to say your goodbyes. You probably won't be seeing him for some time. Really? And why is that? The trouble with your family is you all think that you're untouchable. Now, you've already lost one son because you were too self-absorbed to notice that he needed your help. And you're about to lose another. Because your arrogance has made you take your eye off the ball. Now, that wouldn't have happened in the old days, would it? Fascinating. Mm. I had you a lovely shepherd's pie in Holloway. Turn around, arms up. I suppose these are aspirin, are they? That's not mine. You're nicked. Sarge, what you got? Found these in his sock. Good. Joe, take in. Steve, come with me. Anything? Sorry for you, Gina. Well, I don't want pity from someone like you. Someone like me. When you've got as much power and respect as I have, there are always people willing to talk. Yeah. We've got informants all over the place. Sometimes it's the money, sometimes just fear. But I always will be one step ahead of you, Gina. What's that? Lucy Thatcher. Took the time. Where is it, Redford? Don't know what you're talking about. You're wasting your time, I'm afraid. You won't find anything incriminating on these premises, I can assure you that. I know you've got a sample of cocaine here somewhere. Not anymore. Search me. Search my car. You won't find anything. Do you really think I'd be that stupid? You really are like your old man. And he was a complete loser and all. What? Whoa! Easy, Rob! Easy! Leave it! Watch it, Thatcher. I'll have you up on an assault charge. No wonder your brother took the coward's way out and topped himself in prison. He couldn't stand being related to scum like you. Rob, leave oh, me! God. Come on! You and anybody connected with you! You ain't seen the last of me. Yeah, glad to hear it. I'll be waiting. Anything? No, he must have dumped it en route. Great. What about Frank Tope? <laughs> Whoops. You're coming with me. Oh, it's quite touching. You've made your bed, you can lie in it. Steve? Sarge? Get her out of here. And if she puts up a fight, cuff her. Right. Next time on The Bill. There's a possibility that Radford's are using her, and I wouldn't put it past that old dragon be putting the strings herself. Congratulations, Constable. You're a credit to the force. She might be your mother, but she is my wife, and you will respect her.